So we'll go ahead and get started. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ben Lloyd, president of the Hartford Land Trust. I'd like to thank you all for joining us and more importantly, for caring enough about your community to take time out of your evening to learn a, bit, a little bit about the plans for the Wellsenbach Farm property on Willoughby Beach Road. It's that same concern for our community and our environment that drives us in our work at the Hartford Land Trust. And I know it's the same for our partners at the Isaac Walton League. This evening, you will hear a little about both organizations, but mostly we will be discussing the exciting plans for this unique and important piece of land. During the meeting, we ask you to please use the chat feature to submit any questions for our panelists. Sarah Hummer, our Outreach and Administration Coordinator, will be monitoring the chat box for questions. We will hold questions until the end of the presentation. If you're unable to view the presentation or need to leave early, we will have the full meeting recorded and available for later viewing on the Harford Land Trust YouTube page. We will be distributing the, the link next, next week via email, so keep an eye out. So with that, I'd like to introduce our panel for the evening. Kristen Kirkwood is the Executive Director of the Harford Land Trust. In addition to running the day-to-day -day operations of Harford's only countywide land preservation nonprofit, she also leads our partnership with APG, which provided the funding for the land trust purchase of this property years ago. She's an eighth she is the eighth generation to operate her family's farm, Newark Farms, in Whitehall, where she lives with her husband, Chet, and two children, Forrest and Sage. Kristen joined the Hartford Land Trust in 2017 after many years with a global consulting firm, managing projects ranging from timber traceability to combating wildlife trafficking. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Finance from the University of Maryland, and a Master of Arts in Sustainability and Natural Resource Management from Harvard University. Next, Mike Horsman is president of the Harford County chapter of the Isaac Walton League. He is also a League National Director representative from Maryland and has been a champion for engaging youth and the wider community at the Isaac Walton League. A resident of Joppa, he works at APG, where he supports toxicology research programs involving all major routes of toxicant administration. Mr. Horsman also serves as principal investigator for military-specific traumatic brain injury research programs. We also have some elected officials joining us this evening, and we'll give them an opportunity to provide some remarks after the brief presentation and prior to answering whatever questions you may have. Uh, first, uh, State Senator Bob Cassily represents District 34, which includes the southern portion of the county as well as Bel Air. A lifelong Hartford County resident, he graduated from Bel Air High School in 1976. He has a distinguished career in public service, having served as a mayor and town commissioner in Bel Air and as a member of the Hartford County Council. He served for many years in the U.S. Army, both active both in active duty and the reserves. And among other honors, he earned the coveted Army Ranger tab. Currently engaged in the practice of the private practice of law, he has received numerous awards for providing free legal services to the disadvantaged. He lives with his wife, Debbie, in the Bel Air Historic District, where they raised their five children. Senator Cassidy and his family have been longtime supporters of the Hartford Land Trust. State Delegate Steve Johnson represents District 34A, which includes the southern part of the county. He is a member of the Health and Government Operations Committee, Public Health and Minority Health Disparity Subcommittee, as well as the Government Operations and Health Facilities Subcommittee. He has served on various boards and clubs, both locally in Aberdeen and countywide. Delegate Johnson is, and his wife own Johnson Family Pharmacy in Aberdeen, where he has also served as an auxiliary police officer. Born in Ohio, raised in West Virginia, he has lived in Maryland since 1980 with his family and has been involved in local politics and community activism and is a supporter of the Harford Land Trust. And finally, Andre Johnson represents District A on the Harford County Council, which includes Edgewood, Joppa, and Abingdon. 
He has lived in the Edgewood area nearly his entire life and graduated from Edgewood High School in 1989. He and his wife, Shauna, have five children. Andre currently serves as a special investigator for the Baltimore City Department of Housing and Community Development. Prior to that, he served honorably in the U.S. Army, as well as with the Baltimore City Police Department and the Hartford County Sheriff's Office. He remains active in coaching and mentoring programs in the community. And also, I believe we have on tonight, um, uh, joining us is uh, County Council President Pat Vincenti. Um, we're glad you can join us and, um, and thank you so much for, for taking time out of your evening, not just to, to our panelists, but to all of our, um, all of our community members who have joined us this evening. Uh, so with those introductions, I'd now like to turn the discussion over to Kristen Kirkwood to talk about the Hartford Land Trust. Thanks, Ben. Hi, everyone. As Ben said, I'm Kristen Kirkwood. <clears throat> I'm the executive director of the Hartford Land Trust. Um, I'd love to be with you all in person presenting down in Edgewood, but this is our next best chance. Um, I'll just start off by saying it's been a real pleasure to work on these projects in the Edgewood area. I'm from the northern portion of the county, so our Piedmont area, which looks very, very different than Edgewood. And it's been really fantastic to get to know some of these crown jewels of Edgewood, these open space areas with beautiful beach forests, vernal pools, which right now are just alive with amphibian activity, and a very different landscape than what I'm used to. And if you haven't yet gone down to this area on Willoughby Beach Road, I really encourage you to do that after this presentation because it is a truly special place in Hartford County that is really not like much of our other types of landscapes. So with that, I'll start off by introducing Hartford Land Trust. We're a nonprofit that was started in 1991 by a group of citizens who were concerned about the rapid unplanned development of land in the 1970s and 1980s in this county. They wanted to ensure that our most valuable natural resources were recognized and protected for the value that they bring to the county. Our founders modeled the Harford Land Trust off of the Nature Conservancy as an action-oriented land preservation nonprofit that was fully capable of taking on our own independent land transactions rather than just advocating for the government to do so. That mission has really been at the forefront of what we've been doing for those, these past 30 years. We work with landowners, both private and public, to conserve land and protect its natural resources for its scenic beauty, the rural character, promoting a healthy quality of life, and all the other benefits that it brings us here in Hartford County. We have a vision that all residents, no matter where you live, what your means are, that you in the present and also the future would have access to open space. We want our county to be characterized by forests and fields and farms, and also those well-planned diverse communities that make this a great place to live. Being surrounded on three sides by water bodies, certainly water, including the Susquehanna River, Gunpowder River, and Chesapeake Bay is a huge part of the work that we do. We know that what happens on the land ends up in the water. So oftentimes our assessments do focus on those properties with important water quality benefits. Especially during this past year with COVID, we know that our vision for having citizens' lives enriched by the abundance of natural areas couldn't be more true than this past year. Getting outside has really been a lifeline for many people and also having that access to that wonderful local food that we have here in Hartford County has made a huge difference in people's lives this past year. And we don't see that changing. It'll continue to help shape our community for the future. We also are very focused on youth, which you'll hear a lot about in tonight's presentation that we know it's not just enough to preserve these special places. We need to have people, especially our young community members, feel a connection to the land. Over our history, we've helped preserve over 12,000 acres of land in Hartford County. Among our successes, we've acquired and protected some of our most beloved public parks, such as the expansion of Anita Sea Light Estuary Center, the Forest Greens Perryman Lake Preserve, Kilgore Falls, and many others. We also, as part of our work, own a good bit of land, and I'll show you some maps of what we own in the Edgewood area later in the presentation. We do have three full-time staff, but we also rely on volunteer board members, other volunteers that support our work, and really the generosity of our members and donors is what keeps us going and allows us to do this great work. If you aren't familiar with Harford Land Trust, I encourage you to visit our new website at harfordlandtrust.org, which has a lot of information about what we do and ways to get involved.
So why do you preserve land? We firmly believe that conservation is not an expense, but it's an investment for today and for the future. The environmental benefits are perhaps the most obvious ones. The protecting large blocks of area is really the space that plant animals and ants need to thrive. <clears throat> it's not just enough to have small fragments of land here and there. And the coastal plains habitat along Willoughby Beach Road is very limited outside of Aberdeen Proving Ground. So it's really important that we work to preserve those natural resources that we have there. Also, especially being so close to the bay, what we do in the land here is really preventing future pollution loads from going into the bay. And we know a strong and healthy ecosystem provides us with so many benefits, whether it's the pollinators that you see coming in the spring or erosion and flood control or just climate regulation. So on the people side, quality of life is really enhanced by these special open areas. Experience in nature, we feel is an essential, essential part of life. And evidence suggests that children and adults really benefit so much from contact with the outside world that it's now being viewed as a public health strategy. Especially within our development envelope in Hartford County, which is our area designated for growth and where about 80% of the population lives, we definitely need these open spaces interspersed with residential and commercial development to support this good quality of life we enjoy in Hartford County. And then lastly, on the economic side, when we preserve land, we build a stronger Hartford County economy from supporting local farming businesses and agricultural jobs to the reduced cost of public services. Preserving land is always a good financial deal. And especially in these sort of peri-urban places like Edgewood, properties that are in close proximity to urban spaces do to open spaces do increase in value. The Hartford Lands Trust has a long-standing track record of preservation in the Edgewood area. This started in 1994 with the donation of what we call Otter Creek Woods to the Hartford Land Trust. This is an area about 104 acres on the north side of uh, Willoughby Beach Road closer to Flying Point Park. This is now permanently preserved and we continue to own this as a conservation preserve. It has very unique habitat and mature woodlands. Next, our involvement with the Welsenbach Farm actually dates back to 2002. Edgewood is not known for this now, but it really was a land of rich farmland and the farm there that we know as Welsenbach Farm continues to be very fertile ground. In 2002, we purchased what is the western portion of the property from Gertrude Parks, whose maiden name was Welsenbach. We then sold this to the county in 2004 with the restriction that it must always be used for public outdoor open space. Then marching forward to 2013, we acquired what we call the Monks Creek Woods, as it does go into Monks Creek, not Otter Creek, on the southern portion of Willoughby Beach Road. This is about 60 additional acres adjacent to our Otter Creek woods that we also manage as a conservation preserve. This is that beautiful stretch of woods that you would go to as you're heading east on Willoughby Beach Road after the high school, after the Welsenbach Farm and heading towards Flying Point Park. We hear from members in the community all the time that this is their favorite stretch of woods to drive along. It's a beautiful drive if you hadn't, haven't done so yet. This is a map of those areas that I was just speaking about, in addition to those that are owned now by the county as well as the Isaac Walton League. So these uh, parcels on the map outlined in red are all permanently preserved open space. So you can see the very large area of woods and also wetlands in Otter Creek Woods, uh, Otter Creek, um, Otter Point Creek, excuse me, that is owned by the Isaac Walton League. That's about an existing 350 acres known as the Bosley Conservancy that Mike will talk about a little bit later. That western portion owned by Gertrude Parks of the Welsenbach Farm is the one that has the county logo on it. The new portion of the Welsenbach Farm is the, that with the arrows on it. And then going down the road, you'll see our Otter Creek and Monks Creek Woods, and then finally Flying Point Park. This is something that not many people know because you probably don't spend as much time looking at maps as I do, but Edgewood has this, this beautiful treasure of all of this open space, including this very unique estuary, which is only one of three in the state of Maryland that's des designated um, as a national estuarine research reserve. So the Welsenbach Farm 
was once a dairy farm, like many in Hartford County. It then transitioned to other forms of agriculture around the 1960s. Gertrude Parks and her brother F Philip Welsenbach lived there most of their adult life. This second portion that we'll speak about to the east, we purchased in 2015. It has rich ecological values and a beautiful scenic view along the road. It is still actively farmed by Maurice Jones, who's farmed it for over two decades. Many of you may know his great Jones Family Farm Produce Stand on Route 7. We did host a tree planting for Arbor Day with Harford County government, and you'll see that photo here. And we also just completed a stream restoration within the woods to correct some significant erosion heading into Otter Point Creek. The house that was there, which many people I know love to drive by, unfortunately had fallen into disrepair prior to Harford Land Trust acquiring the property. After assessing it, both for structural integrity and with the Historical Society, we deemed it to be unfit for living and then worked with various uh, volunteer fire companies to do a training burn. This is something that's very hard to do in Harford County because there are not many suitable sites for it. So we felt that it was a really positive way to take down this house, be a wonderful training experience for our firefighters in the community. So then fast forward, just a few years ago, we started a conversation with our colleagues at the Isaac Walton League about the future of this property. Being so close to the property that they owned, we started to talk about how we could work together to find a way for this to have more public access and to be more of a community feature in Harford County and Edgewood specifically. So I'll leave it with that, just as a little bit of a teaser of how these conversations started. And then Mike will talk about our recent work of selling it to the Isaac Walton League and what's coming next. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mike. Hi, uh, Christian, thank you for the wonderful background and Ben, thank you for the introduction that you gave earlier. Uh, my name is Mike Horsman. I am currently the president of the Hartford County chapter of the Isaac Walton League. Um, I am also a national director to the Maryland division, uh, overseeing both the Hartford County chapter and the sportsman's chapter up in the northern part of the county. And I've been a member of the league for roughly eight or nine years now. Um, I don't keep good personal statistics, um, but I've also been serving as president for probably the past four to five years. And we've had a lot of changes occur over that period of time. Um, I'll briefly, to sort of cover what Kristen was alluding to, uh, most recently our chapter has uh, had to move locations. Um, and we did that as part of the expansion of the I-95 Express Toll Lane. Our old chapter house used to be over in Abingdon, uh, sort of behind the Wegmans. And that property uh, is slated for development of the Express Toll Lane and entrance and exit ramps from there. So the land was condemned, uh, the chapter house was condemned and we did receive a payment from MDTA, which we immediately decided we would use to try to build a new place and preserve more land in this part of the county. This is consistent with our mission. Our mission statement is to conserve, restore, and promote the sustainable use and enjoyment of our natural resources, including the soil, air, woods, waters, and wildlife. Our chapter has been active and in the county since 1950 when it was established, uh, and we have been committed to these tasks ever since then. The League in general, and our chapter as well, takes a science-based approach toward protecting our community's natural heritage and improving our outdoor recreational opportunities for all Americans. This does mean that we take the word conservation seriously and we do delineate a difference between conservation and preservation. We want our resources to be available for this generation to enjoy and make sure that we manage it in a way that is available for future generations to enjoy. So next slide, please, Kristen. So anyone not interested in the overall structure and politics of the Isaac Walton League can kind of tune out at this point in time. I'll try to make this part brief. But I like to say that the Isaac Walton League is one of the least known oldest conservation organizations in the country. Um, 
We are a national organization. There are over 200 chapters nationwide, and there are 13 chapters within the state of Maryland. We're headed up by the Isaac Walton League National Office, which is headquarters down in Bethesda, which is very convenient for those of us living in Maryland and Virginia. After the national organization, we have a board of regional directors and the regional directors are really there to kind of liaise between national and the state divisions um, for a particular region, uh, being the Northeast, Southeast, uh, Midwest and West. And then from there, we move down to state divisions. Every state that has at least one chapter will have a division. The divisions are represented <clears throat> Um, at the national convention every year, which is where uh, the national organization sets many of its uh, policies um, as we move forward. Within each division, there can be any number of chapters. Like I said before, the Maryland chapter or the Maryland division has 13 chapters. That's quite a few for this state. Each individual chapter is essentially acts as an independently owned and operated. 501c3. Um, some have their own um, 501c3 status and other ones uh, work under the umbrella of 501c3 that the national organization has. They all also have their own focuses and this is where the Isaac Walton League promotes its grassroots efforts uh, towards conservation policy. And that means that we have a lot of diversity um, and sometimes it can be difficult to get that all going in one direction at the national level, but it also means that chapters are able to um, direct their energies toward the local issues that affect those chapters and their communities. So a little bit more about the League. The League was founded in 1922. Uh, we're coming up on a hundredth anniversary, and the league's nas or the national league's goals are really in influencing conservation policy at the national level. Uh, they heavily influenced the Clean Water Act when it was first put into uh, law, and a lot of policies that the league had at the time were included or at least guided some of the regulations within the Clean Water Act. So. Clean water has always been at the heart and soul of the Isaac Walton League. For anyone that's familiar with a Save Our Streams program, uh, that was originally generated by the Isaac Walton League and then promoted through school systems as a part of way of getting youth involved. <clears throat> uh, recently, the, the League has been lobbying for crop insurance benefits. Uh, in the most recent farm bill, we proposed what was billed as a uh, good driver discount uh, for crop insurance. That meaning farmers who employ sustainable farming practices on their land would have a discount on their crop insurance premiums for the year. And this all cycles back to the science-based approach. If you are uh, enacting sustainable farming practices, you have, as a result, better land, you should have better yield and therefore have less of a need uh, to claim crop insurance. Okay, I can't think of anything else here, we'll move on. <laughs> I do that a lot. Um, I might, I might uh, miss things uh, as we go, so I apologize for that. The Hartford County chapter, we have been a very proven community partner for throughout our existence. Uh, our, our crowning jewel is the 350 acre Bosley Conservancy that Kristen recently referred to. Uh, we have a memorandum of agreement with Harford County Parks and Rec for co-use of the Bosley Conservancy. Um, there are trails that are maintained on the property. There's a canoe and kayak trail and many of the programs running out of the NESC Light Estuary Center uh, use Bosley Conservancy property. We really do like this agreement and we do like having our land available for the community to enjoy um, in whatever way they can. We currently partner with Hartford Christian School and bringing some of their students out into the conservancy. Uh, they do some monitoring for us on our wood duck nesting box populations. 
and we're looking to expand uh, those partnerships with other schools in the area. We do also work with scout groups when the opportunities arrive, um, and we do sponsor Eagle Scouts again when the opportunities arise. So what do we do? Um, for any of my members that are currently watching, I apologize if I uh, miss anything that you feel is important, but we, I like to say we do a lot of boots on the ground conservation work. We do have an extensive wood duck nesting box program at Bosley Conservancy, and we recently picked up uh, and partnered with Hartford County Ducks Unlimited on an additional 50 nesting boxes over in the headwaters of the Gunpowder River. We do tree replantings. We most recently received a grant um, from American Water to replant an acre of degraded forest within the conservancy uh, that was uh, emerald ash trees that have been decimated by the emerald ash borer and we've replanted some native Atlantic white cedars and bald cypress and we hope to continue this work uh, as we move forward. We have an annual scholarship program where we're currently giving away five $1,000 scholarships to Hartford County students who are going into environmental sciences and their collegiate studies. We have a hunter safety program that is run in conjunction uh, with the Isaac Walton League and usually uses our land and our former range facilities. Uh, these hunter safety classes are some of the few in-person classes that are still offered. And I know quite a few people who rave about these classes and the quality thereof. And my daughter was actually just a, a student in the most recent one, and she had a great time and learned everything she needed to to get her on her way. We have also been working on uh, water monitoring, so uh, chemical monitoring and biological monitoring of several stream sites within the county. We hope to be able to expand our capabilities in this area to be able to get more data connected into Isaac Walton League National's Clean Water Hub, which is a national database where citizen science uh, water quality is integrated into a searchable database. Uh, and we hope that that information can become available uh, for states and national legislators when considering uh, policies that, that affect our streams and our local waterways. Well, what else might I be forgetting? We do a number of other things, um, but I am probably just sort of glossing over the, the ones that stick out to me right now. So how do we do all of these things? Um, we're an all volunteer organization, nobody is paid. And so it is all done by volunteer support. There have to be people available, people willing, and every project really needs to have a champion. Next slide, please. All right, so I'll get back on the topic of the Welsenbach farm. So, Back when um, our old chapter house was condemned, uh, we started looking for a new home. And as Kristen had said, we've had our eye on the Welsenbach property for quite a while. And this is because it is directly connected to our Bosley Conservancy. The disconnection that we had before, the physical space between our chapter house and the Conservancy did make it a little clunky to have our programs uh, where there was never a good place to meet uh, with a building or any facilities or anything like that. And so we really loved the opportunity <clears throat> to be able to place a new chapter house that was in direct connection to the Bosley Conservancy, which is where a lot of our programs uh, are run. And we spent a lot of time going back and forth, figuring out how we could make this work, um, how we could balance um, the need for us to have a chapter house on the property, but also balance the requirements of the conservation easements that exist uh, to keep the land in its native natural form. So what are our plans for the area? <clears throat> we certainly don't want to develop the land heavily, but we do need to have a chapter house. And we want that chapter house which we're gonna be calling the Conservation and Education Center to be an example property for sustainable design and sustainable use of our resources. 
So we're hoping to have solar panels for all of our electricity. We're hoping to have a lot of energy efficient and a lot of sustainable types of materials in the construction. Um, we want this space to, to have a large meeting area. Um, before we did lose our chapter house, we had our monthly um, membership meetings. And at those meetings, we generally have a speaker on various topics, uh, ranging anywhere from uh, black bear populations within the state and movements around the area um, to uh, different uh, presenters on farming and uh, dairy operations. Uh, and anything goes. Uh, we have a great public outreach person who's always out there looking for new things for us. We want to be able to expand our conservation programming for the community and also especially for the local schools in the area. Um, I, we, we do hope to have a small laboratory space within this building and that is near and dear to my heart as a researcher, but it is also really great to be able to get classrooms of children out into nature to take their science principles they learn in the classroom and put them into action to be able to do that in this one place and make for a cohesive lesson is very valuable and leaves a great impression along, among many children that wouldn't otherwise get this sort of exposure. We really want to focus on being the gateway to outdoor adventure in southeastern, the southeastern part of the county. As I said before, we already have a trail network over at the Bosley Conservancy, and we'd like to find a way to expand that trail network on this property and then connect the two. We're also looking to put a kayak launch into the area. These things would be available for public use and it would allow access to the canoe trail and the upper part of the Bush River, which would be great. We do have a, a canoe launch within the Bosley Conservancy, but it is pretty difficult to get to if you're just going to go down there on your own because you do need to carry your canoe or kayak quite a distance to get to the launch. We hope to engage more with Edgewood science classes as well as any others in the area. And I have been in some conversations to sort of start this process and we're very optimistic we'll be able to make it work. We're also uh, thinking about having a migratory bird monitoring station. This would simply be a tower at the back of the property uh, that wouldn't be very obtrusive to line of sight, but it would be a passive telemetry tower that would track uh, birds up and down the eastern coast that have been uh, tagged by other agencies. Some other options that have been thrown out have been something like a community garden. I think this is a great thing and a great use for this property, but this, as well as many of the other things, will certainly require quite a bit of volunteer support and definitely that champion to really make the program go and help keep everything running smoothly. So again, we hope to do all these things with volunteer support. We also need the proper funding for a lot of these things. <clears throat> and that funding can come in the form of grants, fundraising and investments. And in fact, one of our largest fundraising events is in fact the Hartford County uh, gun show that we do every year, except for this year, thanks to COVID. Um, while gun shows tend to be quite a controversial topic, uh, especially these days, the funds that we generate there help us continue to have this sort of programming and be able to make these sorts of investments into our community. So my final slide here is just a little bit of a teaser of what we're looking at and what we're considering for a chapter house design. It should, this, the plans uh, described here are approximately a 3,000 500 square foot chapter house. <clears throat> we would have a large and a small conference room that uh, could be small for our board meetings, but large for our membership meetings. And membership meetings, by the way, are open to the entire community. That doesn't mean you must be a member to attend. There was hope to have a, a library and sort of a historical room up toward the, the front left of the building where we can we want to cover a lot of the history of the property in of itself, uh, as well as the league. Uh, we hope to have a lab space over in the front on the right side of the building. And then some general, you know, HVAC kitchen and, and bathroom facilities. The idea is to have the building be as low profile as possible. 
so that it's not sticking up very high along the uh, tree line or anything like that and to keep the impact low. We hope to be able to direct it so that we're making use of sun um, for heat and uh, solar panels on the roof. But again, a lot of these things that we hope to have will really depend on the final build cost and available funds for us. We also want to make sure that we have enough funds to be able to invest in the future and keep our chapter up and running. And I think that is about all I have to cover at this point in time. I'm sure I forgot many things, but I'll turn it back to Kristen. Thank you so much, Mike. It's really exciting to see how the plans have developed. Um, one thing I will say before just concluding is that um, the Isaac Walton League is not done with us yet. So the Harford Land Trust used a model which we sometimes call buy, protect, sell in this instance. So even though we are no longer the landowner, in the course of doing this transaction, we retained what's called a conservation easement. So this is the primary mechanism throughout the county with which land is preserved. So we have a permanent responsibility to ensure that the preservations on the land are upheld. So we'll do this in partnership with the Isaac Walton League as they continue their plans. Um, but it is a wonderful mechanism that allows us to then recycle the funds from this property into more land preservation in the southern part of the county. As Ben said at the opening, we did purchase this property with funding from Aberdeen Proving Ground. We have a partnership with them to preserve valuable natural resources near the base. So again, these proceeds from our sale will go directly back into more land conservation in the southern part of Hartford County. So now I would really um, appreciate hearing from both Delegate Steve Johnson and Councilman Andre Johnson, who we have with us tonight, because they have been um, great supporters of this project. And I'm really interested to hear their remarks and they can address our participants as well as anybody watching the recording in the future. So Delegate Johnson, we'll go with you first. If you could please unmute yourself and turn on your microphone. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Do you want to turn on your video? Uh, that doesn't seem to want to let me turn it on. Do you have to do anything for me to turn this on? Oh, there we see you now. There you go. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'm thrilled about this project, Kristen. I'm so glad that you were able to come down to Southern Harford County where uh, not only the conservation aspect, but the education uh, to so many young people who otherwise may not really have a chance to be exposed very much to some of the great things you do when it comes to restoring watersheds, reducing air pollution, fighting litter and protecting wildlife habitats. So um, I'm, I'm all on board. I'm psyched about the location and actually Flying Point Park was the first park I ever visited when I moved to Maryland in 1980. So I know the area, I've been through there many times. It's a great location. And it was nice that you were able to butt up, up against other properties that are in the conservation um, package. And I just want you to know that I'm a supporter and I will try to help you every step along the way from here on out. And I also wanted to say that um, we have a team in Harford County uh, and, and we work very closely with Councilman Johnson, but the Senator, uh, myself, Delegate McComas and Delegate Lasanti, we are the four representatives that 100% of our district is in Harford County. And it, it enc encompasses the whole development envelope. So when we put in bond bills, we usually we try to put all of our names on the bond bills, but due to COVID this year, we could not do that. There only had to be one name on each bond bill. So we split the bond bills up and each put a couple in to try to bring back the absolute most we could to Harford County. So um, I know there was one in for this project and I'm really excited about it. And um, like I said, we hope to help you every step along the way in the future. So thanks for the invitation today. And I'm excited to watch this unfold and this project develop. Thank you so much. And I of course have to say that Delegate Johnson and his wife are 
longtime Hartford Land Trust member. So thank you so much for your support for not only this project, but land conservation across the county. You're welcome. Um, okay, so Councilman Johnson, are you able to also unmute yourself and turn your video on? Uh, well, it's not, it's, it's not allowing me to turn my video on. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now. Am I on? You are. Hi, okay, welcome. Great. Thanks. Well, listen, I want to just um, uh, echo everything that Delegate Johnson said. Um, listen, I want to also thank the Isaac Walton League, uh, Hartford Land Trust, and everyone involved to that, that, is, uh, that is definitely trying to make this thing happen. This is an enormous benefit for District, for district A, the Edgewood area. And, and the county in general, because it, it, um, it's a benefit for green infrastructure and open space uh, for the area. Uh, it also provides uh, um, environmental space uh, to, to study and it's, it's rich. Like I think, like you said earlier, it's definitely rich in um, you know, ecological environments uh, in, in that particular area. Um, and it's a fabulous idea because like uh, Delegate Johnson said, you know, it not only does it help kids, but it also helps adults that necessarily may not have the, the transportation to, to go elsewhere in the county. And it's something that is right here in their backyard that they can uh, actually see, put their hand, uh, you know, put their hands to and, and really, um, get involved in, in environmental issues. So I just want to thank you all. I appreciate you. Anything that I can do to, to help and assist, uh, just reach out to me. And um, I, I thank you for, for inviting me to this, uh, to this forum tonight. <laughs> thank you so much, Councilman Johnson. We're so appreciative to have you as a supporter and to join us tonight. Um, I should also say that some of our colleagues at Hartford County Parks and Rec were joining us tonight as well. And while they're not panelists, they've been very much aware of this project and have been supporters of it from day one. So thanks to our colleagues in Parks and Rec as well. Uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and start looking at some of our questions. So if you have not already put a question in the chat function, now is your opportunity to do so. I'll go ahead and read those and sort of direct those questions to whoever might be the best one to answer it. So the first question we have is from Peg Nyland, who I know very well. Peg is the former executive director of the Harford Land Trust. She's asking Mike, are there plans to plant more bald cypress specifically on the Welsenbach property like you did on other portions of the Conservancy? Yes, that's a great question. Um... Actually, uh, myself and our conservancy manager were out at Welsenbach uh, over the past weekend putting out three new wood boxes, sorry, wood duck boxes uh, down by the creek. And we noticed quite a bit of degraded um, emerald ash uh, down there as well. And I said, hey, this would be another great site to plant some bald cypress and white cedar. Um, so we do have an idea that uh, it might be a great place to to install some of those trees. Um, again, we need to find the funding to do so. Uh, and if we do identify it and get everything approved, uh, that is one site where we would certainly be looking uh, to place some of those trees. And for those of you that have not seen a bald cypress, we do have them here in Hartford County and some places where you can see them. And they're very distinct in that they like to be in water and they have what are known as knees, which are portions of their roots, which sort of jut out of the ground. So they're a really distinctive look. Um, they're mostly known for being south of here, but the coastal plains habitat, like in Edgewood, is a really good place for them. Um, so they are a wonderful tree in our environment here. And so uh, if you haven't seen them, you'll be in for a treat once you get out on the property, and specifically the Conservancy where they already have them. Um, we have another question here from Bev and Bob Markle, who I know are in the Edgewood community, of where on the property is the building plan to be? So I'll start by answering that and let, let Mike jump in. So with all of our conservation easements, which again is the way in which we preserved this property, we do designate where buildings can go. So if you are familiar with where the old farmhouse was, 
there's about five acres that are around the house and leading to the road. And so that will remain the site of any significant structures, including the building that Mike described. That doesn't mean that there can't be some picnic sites or perhaps a maintenance shed or something small elsewhere on the property, but the large buildings um, and any access way will be where the former structure was on the property. Mike, do you wanna add anything on that? Yeah, you summed it up very well. Uh, how I plan to mention as well. I, I think we're looking always at a, the exact site, nearly the exact site of the former farmhouse, uh, maybe set back just a little bit uh, farther from there, but that's the, the logical place to, to start construction since that was already a disturbed area to begin with. Great. Um, we have Scott Kirby, who is one of our Hartford Land Trust board members, asked, um, well, first he wants to say how excited he is and of all the possibilities here. Um, he said, I saw a short video on a program in Baltimore City to offer an intro to kayaking to urban youth who might not otherwise get exposure to water or nature and would like to see something like that developed once you have the kayak launch. So maybe Mike, do you wanna comment on that? Certainly, um, this is actually right up our alley and a few years back, uh, we tossed around the idea of doing an intro to uh, canoeing class uh, out of the Conservancy. In fact, uh, one of our members, Kurt Howard, would really champion for that. Uh, we didn't get it off the ground at the time because there was sort of a lack of interest, um, but we may not have advertised it as well as we should. So we would certainly like to do things like this in the future. Uh, it's, a, it's a great site to do it and having the access right there uh, would really help out. The Hartford Land Trust also does a annual kayaking event in the summer, our kayak poker run. And for the past few years, we've done that from Flying Point Park and been able to go up into the creek. So it'd be wonderful if there can also be an access point from the Welsenbach property to connect you all the way down to Flying Point Park, sort of um, continuing that water trail, which already exists in the Conservancy and over to Anita Sea Light. Um, and then Scott further asks, where can I find info on the trails on the um, Bosley Conservancy? That is a great question. Um, so right now, to my knowledge, and I'm sure one of my members would correct me, but the only viewable map is at our kiosk at the entrance of the Conservancy at the end of Perry Avenue. However, I think I'll take the photo that we have and place it up on our website as soon as I can get around to it. <laughs> And then as more people use it, if anyone's using the All Trails app and you go out there and record your hike, um, then it would be available through the All Trails app as well. And Mike, am I right that from the main parking area, um, did you say the kiosk has a map? Yes, it does. Yep. Now the trails right now do need a little bit of maintenance, especially our orange trail. Um, we haven't had a lot of time to get out there ourselves and uh, we are planning on working on some of that maintenance over the, the course of the spring time period. Thank you. Um, Angela Reeder says, we are excited about Isaac Walton Lake plans for the area and love our HLT areas. Thank you so much. Um, her question is in regards to traffic on Willoughby Beach Road. Have you all taken into consideration um, the traffic that could be affected on the road? So Mike, I'll, I'll throw that one over to you as you're planning for the building. Right. So. That was actually part of a conversation that we had with planning and zoning. Um, and our operations are not very large and they're not very frequent. Um, the property does have a great sort of U-shaped driveway for in and out, which should help increase uh, a logical flow of traffic. Uh, but our membership is small right now. We have about 25 members and our meetings are once a month, usually on Thursday evenings around seven o'clock. So this would be an area where traffic on the road sort of dies down anyway. We also have a monthly mem uh, board of directors meeting and that would only be about 10 people coming to those meetings. Now, when we have programming at the property, we could certainly draw larger crowds, but we don't intend on this being, at least at this point in time, certainly not even a weekly event, um, probably more seasonal type of events. And at that point in time, we might have some increased traffic flow but it would be very temporary in nature. Yeah, and just to add to that, um, I think the, the plans that you've talked about from our understanding does not seem to be um, 
large, large events at any point in time. But certainly, I think, you know, Angela, your point is well taken that in the future planning um, effects on traffic and making sure the road can handle it is certainly part of the equation. He also sure. asks, um, how do we go about volunteering and do we have to be a member? So I'll answer for Hartford Land Trust. Uh, you know, even though we have some staff, we, we very much do rely on volunteers. We're having a volunteering event this Saturday and another one in April. Um, as a cleanup on the roads and some of the areas of our conservation preserves. We oftentimes have done it along Willoughby Beach Road around the Earth Day timeframe too. Um, we also have a variety of other volunteering opportunities. You do not have to be a member of the Harford Land Trust to volunteer with us, although we do encourage it. Um, Mike, what about volunteers for Isaac Walton League? So a same deal, you certainly do not have to be a member to volunteer with us. Uh, we appreciate any help and support that we can get. Um, right now, since we've really been shut down from COVID for the last year, and we don't really have a place to call home, or at least a house to call home, uh, we're sort of getting geared back up. Um, our first membership meeting since the beginning of COVID is planned for the first week uh, of April. And that's going to consist of people sitting in lawn chairs at the property in some good weather and really just to get us all talking again. Um, I would say our Facebook uh, site is really the best place to get the most up-to-date information. However, I, I will be working on keeping our website up-to-date as well. Um, our website is one of those things that I'm currently managing, and we'd love to have a younger volunteer to help me out with that. I also have two young children with sports and school and everything else, so sometimes I do fall behind. Um, but certainly uh, contacting us through email um, if you request uh, to receive more information, we can add you to our, our email list when we have events uh, and request member or volunteer support. Great. Um, also, the Harford Land Trust website has quite a lot of information about how to volunteer with our organization, so I would direct you to that. And you can see on the screen both Mike and my direct contact information. So in addition to just any volunteers that are willing to help, um, I know that many of you out there, especially in the Edgewood area, have a lot of fond memories or even know some distinct history of the property. I would really encourage you to email both of us. It's, it's definitely fun to hear the stories, but I think as Mike said, uh, the history of this property and of agriculture in the Edgewood area is definitely part of the story and will be part of the Conservation and Education Center. Um, someone who told me, they didn't want me to read it out loud, um, but in the chat said that uh, they bought their milk from the Wellsons Bach when they were a child. And so those are really special memories. And even though the use of the property is going to change them, uh, we want to make sure we celebrate that history. A couple other of you are telling us it's exciting. I see that we also have Councilman Chad Schrodes, who um, says that this is fabulous and can't wait to see it. Kurt Howard also said this is all really exciting. Uh, so thank you all for your encouragement. Are there any other questions that any of the attendees have? Okay, well, our contact information is on the screen so you know where to find us. And please stay in touch as this exciting project develops. Thank you so much for your time this evening. We really appreciate your attention. And hopefully when we send out this link to all of you, do feel free to send this to any friends or neighbors or anyone else that you know would like to read about this. And again, I'd like to say thank you to Kristen, the Harvard Land Trust and our elected officials. And thank you to all of you showing your interest this evening. And we hope to see you out there as well. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night.